planned leaving out tonight and going up close to Chicago <coughs> and then picking up tomorrow evening and coming back here to be back here by Tuesday okay. about noon. So yes. yeah. Amen. Yeah. So that's my plan. Glory to God. You know, plans go sideways sometimes. Yeah, so. man makes plans and God laughs. Oh. <laughs> Oops. Where's my glasses? There we go. Oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, God's good. Father God, we just thank you for your word. We thank you for your power. I pray that you anoint this service. Father, give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts to understand. I give you praise and glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise you, Father. I, I, we have, you know, Randy and Elizabeth Davenport are missionaries to the prisons. They're, they're both sick. And that We've been praying for them, but we promised we would pray for them here in service today. They're, they're both running a fever. Yes. And uh, so we're just going to curse that thing in the name of Jesus. Yes. That's right. Thank God for them to be whole yes. in the name of Jesus. Father God, we lift up for Andy and Elizabeth, Father. We pray you touch their bodies, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, show yourself mighty. We pray you're almighty, God. You're more than enough. And I give you glory. I give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. The Lord put this on my heart. I've got a couple things on my heart this morning. But the Lord put this on my heart. Uh, turn me to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Now in Romans chapter 8, Paul talks about... He talks about a lot of important stuff. But I mean... The main thing I want to point out today is we can do the works that Jesus did. But one time as I was praying, the Lord spoke to me and he said, to do the works that I did, you must do the works that I did. Now, I understood what he was talking about. You see, Jesus prayed massive amounts of time. Yeah. He was in touch with the Father. He, as a matter of fact, Jesus said himself, I only say what I hear the Father say. He, Jesus was being led by the Holy Spirit in everything he said and everything he did. So like when he dealt down, people get in controversy, what he wrote in the sand. Well, I don't believe, we know, I don't think it was important what he wrote in the sand. I believe he was to get direction from God Amen. on what to do. Yeah. Because Jesus didn't operate without getting direction from Amen. God. The old covenant prophets didn't either. I mean, they would pray. When, when Elisha, the prophet, the Shunammite woman, he didn't know that her, her son had died. And he gets to her house and her son is dead. And the Bible says he walked around praying, getting direction from God. It doesn't say he was getting, that's what he was doing. He was getting direction from God. What to do? Because just because you say it doesn't make it so. When God says it, then you can have faith to believe God. Because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It's either the word of God here or the word of God when he leads you by his spirit. You see, we're to be led by the spirit of God. Those that are led... By the Spirit of God, those are the sons of God. Romans chapter 8, verse 14, he says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For you've not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you've received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Abba. So we're in tune with God yeah. when we're being led by the Spirit of God. Every, every mighty miracle that, I, that God's ever led me to do, it was always Him. I mean, He led me to do those things. It was always Him. Like when... When Rick came up, when he broke his arm that time, I know some of y'all were here. When he, when he broke, he was at the other church. But when he broke his arm, he came to church in a cat. That's Ron and Gene were there, and he came to, to church in a in a cast one day. Tom was there. He came to church in a cast one day. I said, I said, Rick, what happened? I didn't even know he drove a semi truck. He said, he said, I got hit by a semi truck and broke my arm. I thought, man, it's lucky you just broke your arm. Of course, it was in the terminal yard, you know. But it did. The day before, he had broke his arm in, in the terminal. And, and they had taken him. And, and in the middle of the service, I felt compelled by the Spirit to call him up. So I called him up. And I laid hands on that cast. And by the Spirit, I commanded that bone to heal in the name of Jesus. To men in the name of Jesus. The next day, it goes back, and it's totally healed. They took x-rays, and they took the cast off. And they got the x-rays from the hospital on Saturday yep. and it was broke. 
And so they got they had the new X-ray. It wasn't broke. There you go. Mm -hmm. yeah. So and that's just God. 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 Jesus said. He said, it's not me that's doing these words. He said, I only say what I hear the Father say. And so if these words are not my words, they're the Father's, and the Father doeth the work. You see, even Jesus said, I'm not healing people. I'm not raising people from the dead. The Father is doing that. And then he said, those that believe in me, the same works that I do, shall they do also. So if we want to, be, if we want to do the mighty works of Jesus, we need to get in tune with the Spirit. We need to be Amen. praying in the Holy Ghost, building ourselves up in the most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. And that way we're sensitive to the voice of the Spirit. Yeah. You know, when you pray in tongues, the Bible says the Holy Ghost gives you the utterance. Yeah. So you're hearing from God. So the more you hear from God, the easier it is you to hear from God. So I pray in tongues a lot. A lot. Yeah. I, I, I drive, I'm back driving the semi-truck now. Yeah. But I, I pray in tongues like a lot while I'm driving my semi-truck. I, and I, I used to, I, we, when we very first, first moved up in this area, I was driving for Transport America, and I drove quite a bit with them. But uh, I was going to Crescent Lake uh, Christian Academy back then, and pa Pastor Boudreaux was a new pastor there. And uh, he, I, was home, I was, wasn't here very often, but when I was home, we'd go, to, and Kathy would go to church when I wasn't. But not, we were going there for quite a while, and nobody, most people didn't even know us. So, so anyhow... He came up to me and he said, man, I don't know what you do. I don't see how you drive it. And you're out all that time and doing all that. I said, oh, it's so wonderful. He said, it's wonderful. I said, yeah, I'm just praying in the Holy Ghost and, and having a good time with God. And, and I coveted that. And I get to do that now again. But, but that helps me become sensitive to the voice of the Spirit. So like when, when uh, I, we got a call, we were, we were actually out at the mall, uh, North, Metro North. That was when it was open. Yeah. Penny's was in there. And me and Kathy were in that mall. And we got a call from my my sister-in-law. And she babysat the little boy. He was three years old. Her boy was four years old. And uh, he was our, our nephew. But both boys drowned in the neighbor's pool. And she said and she said they were probably been dead 20 minutes by the time she found them. Because her daughter came dead back down about 20 minutes before she actually went up there. And she's on the phone with somebody. And she said, just leave me alone. And her daughter's trying to get her attention. She said, just leave me alone. Mm -hmm. And so about 20 minutes later, she, she finally gets her attention. And she goes up there and both boys are laying dead in the pool. Floating the face down in the pool. And so, and she called me and she said, I don't know if they're dead or alive, but we're in the ambulance going to the hospital in, Ch in Chillicothe. And I looked over at Kathy, and this was the Holy Ghost in me. And, and said, and I said to Kathy, we may have to raise those boys from the dead. That's what I told Kathy. And so then it turned out we headed towards Chillicothe, and then then they then Rhonda called us back and she said, and we're headed we're headed in a helicopter to to uh, Ch Children's Mercy Hospital. So they life flight them, to, and by, we got there about five minutes before the helicopter did Children's Mercy, and they came in. They had them on breathing machines. They could they were just like dead, you know, but uh, that. And they kept, and they brought, and this was about 5 o'clock in the afternoon, they brought in Rhonda a couple of hours later. They said, they told her this, they said, they said, this is really, really bad. If they do live, they'll probably be like brain dead. They'll probably be a vegetable if they live. And then the mother of the other child was a nurse, and she came, she told us, we know this is really, really bad. And so they didn't let anybody in to see, see the boys tell them. Jason is the boy's name. So he didn't let anybody in until 9 o'clock at night. And so I, I went in with his, they didn't want to let two people in at a time. So Rhonda went in and saw him. And then, and then they brought in, then I went in with Rhonda's sister. And she wasn't living for God. But we went and we were, went in there. And when I was in with Rhonda's sister, she said, well, I'm not really living for God now. But she had been raised up in the Word. So she said, I know the Word says that Jesus said, if two or more will agree on anything, they pray that God would do it. And I said, the word absolutely says that. I said, we're going to believe God right now. So, we, And the nurse is standing there. And the whole time, she's saying, we don't even know if he's here. And he's laying there like he's dead. You know what I mean? And, and he's, every time, his lungs are still full of water. And they put, use the laces to try it. But say, say it would take several days to get the water off his lungs. And, say, and, and, and she, every time... 
you know, we would talk, she'd just say, we don't even know if he's here. We don't even know if he's here. And so, so we prayed, and, and, uh, I, and by the Spirit, I laid my hand on his chest, and I commanded his lungs to be clear in the name of Jesus. And then I brought, went out and brought my dad back in. My dad came in with me, and he's his, uh, he's his uh, grandpa. So, uh, and, and by the Spirit, this, this woman, this, this nurse is saying, we don't even know if he's here. We don't even know if he's here. She's still saying that over and over. And so, so by the Spirit, I said, Dad, put, put your hand on him, on his chest. Now, then his lungs were clear. He wasn't gurgling anymore. Every time the thing breaked in, you could hear his lungs gurgling, but it wasn't gurgling anymore. Amen. So then I just, by the Spirit, felt impelled to command him to open his eyes in the name of Jesus. Amen. And so I said, Jason, this is your Uncle Mike, and this is your Grandpa Emmett. I said, I command you in the name of Jesus to open your eyes. When I said that, his eyes just fluttered a little bit. <laughs> and then I said, now, I, and the nurse heard me say this. And then I said louder, I said, Jason, in the name of Jesus, open your eyes. When I said it that time, his eyes popped wide open. And he was totally healed by the power of God. He was trying to pull, pull stuff off himself. And that, and that night, that night, both boys were healed. I didn't, even tell, I didn't even see the other boy. They were both totally healed. I called in the next morning, and, 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 they, and I asked him about details about him. They said, everything's perfect. They, they said, it's perfect, it's perfect, it's perfect. They said, everything is perfect. He was totally healed by the power of God. And the next few days, the doctors kept bringing all these doctors in, trying to show them this boy that was dead, and, and now, now, he's, now, he's, now he's alive. Now he's totally whole by the power of God. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. Awesome. But, it, but it's all being led by the Holy Ghost. We, we can do the works Jesus did, but even Jesus didn't just do it without God leading him and guiding him. I mean, when, when, like when Mary and Martha, they sent a, they sent a slave to Jesus because their brother was very sick. Lazarus. He was very, very sick. He was a friend of Jesus. And Jesus didn't go. Why didn't he not go? Because he was being led by the Holy Ghost. He, the Bible says how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and due to his power, who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. But he was being led by the Spirit of God in yes. everything he did. Yes. So if we want to do these mighty works, we need to be, in, we need to be spending, spending time in prayer. We need to become sensitive to the voice of the Amen. Spirit. So we're ready at any moment, at any time. Amen. We're ready in season and out of season to be able to deal with situations because you never know when something comes up. You better be prayed up. You better be sensitive to the voice of the Spirit where you can hear from God. Okay? Amen. Hallelujah. Now we're going to skip to my message. <laughs> Hallelujah. Turn me to 2 Timothy chapter 4, chapter 3. Timothy and Titus, they're the pastoral books. What verse? Uh, chapter 3, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. Okay. Know this also in the last days. Say last days. Last days. Folks, we are in the last days. Yes, we are. Now, now, I would read up chapter 2. And, I mean, I had the word so good, I hate to leave anything, but. So do that on your own. Read chapter 2. Notice also in the last days, perilous times shall come. Perilous times shall come. Perilous times shall come. Perilous times shall come. That means everything's not going to be great. A lot of evil shall abound. Yeah. There's another scripture that says where, where evil abounds, grace does much more abound. Where sin abounds, grace does much more abound. And so God's grace is sufficient for anything we need in life. God's grace, in 2 Peter chapter 1, it says God's grace can be multiplied to us through the knowledge of God. We get knowledge of God through the Bible and through prayer. You spend time with God, you get a relationship with God, with Jesus Christ, and then we can know God. And then he's our friend. We can walk with God. Yes. Noah walked with God. Enoch walked with God. Yes. We can walk with God Amen. by the Holy Ghost. We can be led by the Spirit of God. Perilous times shall come. It doesn't say everything's going to get better and better. I hear, I hear a lot of ministers, they go, oh, we're going to have this great outpouring in the very end. Well, we had that, we've been having the outpouring for over 100 years. Holy Ghost has poured out at, at, in, like at the end of the, of the last century, of the 1800s. And that started this latter rain. 
We're, in, we're at the end of the end. We are at the end of the end right now. We're at this point where perilous times shall come. We're living in an evil world. All you have to do is watch the news. It is evil, folks. I call it the bad news. Philippians, Philippians says, what sort of things are good? What sort of things are pure? What sort of things are honest? What sort of things are of good report? If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Okay. If you watch the news, you're not thinking on great things. No. So I don't watch the news very much. Yeah. So some people go, you didn't see that on the news? No. I do listen to the radio while I'm driving a truck. But... Perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. People love their own selves. I have a sister, and she went to a psychiatrist. They told her she needed to love herself more. No, we don't have a problem with loving ourselves more. <clears throat> it's not that we hate ourselves. We not, shouldn't love ourselves more. We need to love others before ourselves. Yes. We need to put other people first. Yes. If we do that, then God's favor and blessing will be upon us. Yes. If we lay down ourselves, that's not the problem. It's loving ourselves enough, not loving ourselves enough. Mm -hmm. That's not the problem. The problem is loving ourselves too much. Amen. The Bible says we should love others like as much as we love ourselves. That's right. true. Right? Hallelujah. Yes. Loving their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affections. That's liking the wrong kind of sex. Right. Without natural affections. Truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce despisers of those that are good. Are you noticing what we have in the world today? Yes, every single one. Uh, traitors, heady, oh, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Mm. Having a form of godliness, that's being religious, but denying the dunamis power thereof. This word power is dunamis. It's the miraculous power of God. Now most churches say, God doesn't do those things anymore. God doesn't heal anymore. God doesn't do miracles anymore. We believe God, does, God doesn't, people don't talk in tongues anymore. That's of the devil. No, that's not of the devil. That's of the devil to say that's of the devil. That's not of the devil. I, I, I worked with a guy, he was a Nazarene preacher. I worked some more with him. Excuse me. And uh, he taught people that speaking in tongues was of the devil. And he said, well, he said he went to, to an assembly of God church with one of his friends, and a person right beside him started talking in tongues. He said, I felt the power of God hit me all over. He said, man, I've been teaching people this was of the devil. <laughs> so now he went back and told his people that it wasn't of the devil. A bunch of his people left. <laughs> When you tell people it's of the devil and they believe you, you're their pastor, then you go back and say, no, you were wrong, then they're going to leave, probably. Yeah. Yeah. We were doing, we would do, used to do, I used to do an international convention of faith ministers. We did monthly meetings and we did meetings over at the other church building. And one night I'd had, I had the, the meeting there and I spoke on, we had ministers there from all different groups. We had one Baptist pastor that was there. And I preached on the importance of praying in tongues. And it opened the power of God available to us. And that man, the next time I saw him, he had received the Holy Ghost, and he was he was he and he was preaching kingdom principles in his church. He got all my tapes on kingdom. Now all the things Jesus taught were kingdom principles. Yeah. Yes. And they're li like living right. Yeah. He started preaching that. He lost almost his whole his own church. Everybody left. Now all of a sudden he's preaching something different. Now all of a sudden he said everything he was preaching was wrong before. So, but he kept preaching. Yes. He just stand, make stands. Uh -huh. The word of God is truth. But see, he, I'm glad that he got filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes. He started preaching the truth. Amen. But if you fed somebody a lie so long, and now all of a sudden you're telling them the truth, they're, they're going to have a hard time swallowing the truth yeah. if you, they've been fed a lie. Yeah. And the Baptists, basically, they preach this once they have always said every single service. Now you're preaching to people, you have to live right. Now you preach to people, you have to live right. Yeah. And you've told them you don't have to live right. right. Yeah. So a lot of his people left. And so he, you know, he told me that. A lot of his, and I said, well, you're preaching the word, right? His daughter said, yeah, he's preaching that's in the word. We're preaching the word. And I said, well, that's good. 
The thing is, people will eventually, you'll get the right kind of people that will yeah. listen to the Word. Yeah. Okay? But we need, we need to stand firm on the Word of God. Don't worry about people leaving. I had, I had, one, I had a, a minister come through. He, he, was a, he was a traveling evangelist. He came through. We were at the other church. He said, Pastor Mike, if you preach against sin, people will leave your church. That's what he told me. I said, I know. I've experienced that. But I'm not going to hold anything back that's profitable. If, I, if they don't know, know that it's not right to do sin, if they don't know that, then they're going to die and go to hell. Then I'm going to stand before God in judgment. Yes. And I'm going to be right. judged according to what I preach. Right. So I'm going to preach the word right. of God without compromise. If you're in yeah. sin, you right. will go to hell. Right. If you die in your sin, you will go to hell. Right. If you die in righteousness, you'll go to heaven. Yeah. And that's a fact. Yeah. I had a lady come to me. And she was, she was upset because her boyfriend that she was living with, she was not married to, she had cheated on him. And she says, the Bible true when it says, you reap what you sow. I said, everything in the Bible is true. And that is true, you reap what you sow. She said, well, I want to get that one thing forgiven so he won't cheat on me. I said, it really doesn't work like that. I said, you need to turn away from all your sin, get right with God, because you're on the path to hell right now. Oh, that did not like, she did not like that. She wanted to just get that sin for you. You got to turn it all over to God. You got to lay it all out. Amen. If you're living in fornication, you have to turn away from that and turn to God. And then God will deliver you. He'll set you free. He'll put you, lift you up, and make you a new creation in Him. We're new creatures in Christ Jesus. Old things are passed away, and all things become new. We're not the old person sinner we used to be. Now a lot of people preach we're always sinners. No, you're not a sinner. You're a child of God. You're an heir of God and join heir with Jesus Christ. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Amen. Jesus came to deliver us from sin. To break and destroy the power of sin in our lives so we can walk in true holiness, true righteousness, only through Jesus Christ. We can't do it on our own. It's only through Jesus Christ. Yes. She said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No man cometh unto the Father but through me. It's only, he said, without me, you can do nothing. Amen. So people try to do it on their own. They can't do it on their own. She said, you can't do it without me. Amen. I mean, we can't live holy without Christ. Right. He's the one that enables us. He's the one that yeah. destroys the power of sin in our life. We are dead to sin, but we have to reckon ourselves in deep to be dead unto sin, but alive unto God through Christ Jesus. Amen. But we need to stand on the word. There's power in the word of God. The Word of God is quick and powerful, living and active and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. He, God gives us the power by His Word to live right. So when something comes up, some old thing comes up, we need to just say, I'm dead to you. I don't live like that. I don't do that anymore. I once was a, I once was a thief, but I'm not a thief anymore. Let him who stole still no more. That's right. Let him who stole still no more. And we can do that. It's not because it's our power. It's Christ in us. Yes. The hope of glory. Christ in us, the hope of glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to verse 1. But having a form of godliness, but denying the dunamis power thereof, from such turn away. In other words, if you're going to the church that says, God doesn't do those things anymore, get out of there. Amen. Because G I mean, Paul said, Turn away from those people that teach you that kind of stuff. If, they, if, they, if you're going to a church that's saying, God doesn't do these things anymore, you better get out of there. Because, because that's what Paul said by the Holy Ghost. He's teaching by the Holy Ghost. Amen. He's an apostle of God. Having a form of godliness, but denying uh, the power thereof from such, turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses... And lead captive, silly women laden with sins, led away with their divers lusts, or all kinds of different lusts, ever learning, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. I mean, there's people that know the word so much. Have you ever met a person, they know so much word, but they're living ungodly lives? They know a lot of word. I, I used to minister on the streets on a weekly basis up in Kansas City. And I, I'd talk to a drunkard. I mean, I talked to this drunkard. I mean, he was drunk while I was talking to him. But he knew the word of God. He thought he was a preacher. He could, pre he could like, speak the word. 
He was drunk as a skunk. I guess he didn't read the part that be not drunk with wine, whereas in excess to be filled with the Holy Ghost. I guess he didn't read where the drunk and no drunkard shall enter the kingdom of God. So. But he was a drunk. But he thought he was a preacher. And he knew the word. But knowing the word and doing the word is not the same. Amen. That's why James says, be not, be not just hearers of the word, but doers, but doers of the word. Be not just hearers of the word, but doers of the word. We don't just hear the word and know the word, but we do the word. Yes. Jesus said, a wise man, he builds his house upon a rock. He not only hears the word, but he does the word. Yes. A foolish man builds his house upon a sand. He hears the word, but he doesn't do the word. And then when the storm comes, he falls. Yeah. If we want to stand firm and, and store, we're in, we're in terminalist times, folks. We're in perilous times right now. But we, we need to stand firm on the Word of God. Yes. God's Word is truth. Amen. We need to believe the Word of God above everything. So when trouble comes, Jesus said, in this world, you will have tribulation. You have, you have persecution. People won't like you because they're not going to like you because you're doing good. Amen. They're going to speak evil of you because you do good. It's always been like that. They're going to call good evil and evil good. That's a sign of the end times. Oh, these gay people, they're great. Oh, you're a righteous person, you're, you're evil. You're a holy person, you're evil. That's crazy. That is crazy. If you're doing perversion, then you're great. We're going to honor you. If you're doing a good thing, then you're evil. Because you're, good is evil and evil is good. You're making them feel bad. They feel guilty. That's yeah. exactly right. You feel guilty. Yeah. Yeah. I, I picked up, I picked up, I used to do Uber driving. I, I picked up these guys at a casino. And then one, they were taking them to a strip joint, okay? <laughs> I have to take them wherever they want to go. <laughs> I mean, it's in the app, so. So anyhow, yeah, so I'm, I'm taking all the time. So I'm taking them on the way, there's four of them. And I'm taking them to the strip joint. And they asked me if I knew anywhere they could get laid. And I said, and I said, I said, sir, I said, I'm a Christian. I don't I'm not into that stuff. They said, oh, we're Christians too. They said, we're all gonna be in church tomorrow morning. This is on a Saturday night. They said, we're all gonna be in church tomorrow morning. I guess they go to the wrong kind of church. <laughs> they tell them it's okay for them to do those kind of things. The Bible says you can't do those kind of things. That's right. Amen. And, and 1 John says, Be not deceived. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. But he that sinneth is of the devil. You know, we're of the devil. Amen. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. But for this purpose was the Son of Man manifest Amen. that he might destroy the works of the devil. You see, Jesus came to destroy the power of sin in yeah. people's lives. Yeah. Because the wages of sin is death. But yes. the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus yeah. Christ our Lord. Yeah. Amen. So Jesus came to set us free. Not free to sin, but free from sin. Yeah. Jesus came to destroy the power of sin in our life so we can truly be holy like Christ is holy. For without holiness, no man will see the Lord. And it's not, you're just not counted holy. No, you're living holy through Christ. Amen. He destroys it. Now, if you do sin, it first says in 1 John, if you do sin, then he's confess that sin with a confession of repentance, and he's faithful and just to forgive you of that sin and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. Say, Father, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do that anymore. Help me never to do that again. He'll break the power of that in your life. Amen. He'll cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Chapter 2, verse 1, it says, I write these words unto you that you sin not. But if any man does sin, let him know that he is an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ. He is the righteous one. And he will deliver you from sin. Yes. He came to take away our sin, and in him is no sin. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Father. Thank you. Thank you. Ever learning, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now, as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses... So do these also resist the truth. You see, there are people in the church. I mean, Moses was God's guy. I mean, Moses was a man of God. God spoke face to face with Moses. And here these guys rose up against Moses, spoke against Moses. Men of corrupt mind reprobate concerning the faith. But they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifest unto all men as theirs was, even as theirs was. So if you stand firm on the word of God, 
If we'll stand firm on the word of God in these end times, we're in the end times. We need to be living a holy life, be an yes. example to people. Amen. Kathy and I, we've made there's there's lots of times we've made very, very little money. Uh, but we still were prosperous. We still had favor on our life. Hallelujah. We had been making a lot of money. We were we were still prosperous. And and people would think we made a lot of money. I had this one guy one time. They lived in a they lived in a trailer and they couldn't pay their bills. And but we were always we were always ahead. And I, I told him one day I said, "You guys probably make a lot more money than we do." And he said, "No, no, no, no." I said, "No, I'm serious." And so we sat down, and they made way more money than we did. It's just they spent money on what they wanted to buy. We were very frugal. I had people like making fun of me because we wouldn't buy popcorn at movie theaters and stuff. And we, I mean, I mean, we're still like that. What? <laughs> I'm not gonna spend 10, 12 bucks on a bucket of popcorn. Yeah, right. When I can go buy, when I can go buy some food for four or five bucks, yeah. a whole meal. Yeah. And so, so anyhow, and so I, I, they can make fun of me <laughs> if they want to. But I mean, I'm following God's direction. All the way to the bank, right? All the way to the bank. I mean, <laughs> we got all our debts paid off, and God's good. Yes. It's what you invest. In. It's what becomes important to you. Amen. We always have paid all our bills on time, so we have good credit rating. Yeah. So we're 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 particular about paying. You know, pay what you owe. Yes. You know, when you when you owe a bill, you made that made that promise that you would pay the bill. So that's an obligation, a yes. truth. You're a Christian. That's an obligation of truth. We should be honorable people because we're child, we're children of God. Now, the sad thing is, like a high percentage of ministers have very poor credit ratings because they're really not concerned about paying their bills. But I'm telling you, we should have the best credit ratings yes. when we're a minister of God because we're honorable people. Amen. You tell a, you tell a bank that you're that you're a pastor. A lot of times, they don't even want to do business with you because they know a lot of them don't have bad good credit. Well, I've got, we've got good credit because we've always paid all our bills on time. I was kind of raised up by that. My dad was like that. And so I was kind of raised that way. And so I, th I think it's honorable to do that. Yeah. To pay your bills. You owe a bill, pay it. Amen. You got the money, pay it. Amen. I paid my bill before I, had, before I bought food, myself personally. Because I, I, I know God's going to bring me food if I need food. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Praise your Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God is good. Yes, he is. He's a good, good God. Amen. He's mighty God. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Verse 10, But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life. He's saying, You know me. You know the way I've lived. You know how I'm doing. You know the doctrine I've taught you. My manner of life, my purpose, my faith, my long-suffering, my charity. That's walking in love. Patience, persecution. Say persecution. Persecution. Jesus said, they persecuted me, they'll persecute you too. Mm -hmm. Don't get upset if you get persecuted for Christ's sake. Rejoice. In the early church, when they got persecuted for Christ's sake, they rejoiced. Jesus said, you will get, get a greater reward for your persecution. So, I mean, like Peter, when they, did, when they did kill him, when they martyred him, he refused to let them crucify him, standing up like Jesus would. They had to crucify him upside down because he didn't want he didn't want to be crucified like Jesus was. Mm -hmm. That's not in the Bible, but it's in church history. So that's in the church history of the martyrs and stuff. But so we need to understand that there is persecution. If you're living for God, you'll be persecuted. People are going to persecute you, but just rejoice. Just don't just let it go in one ear and out the other. Just just be happy. Have joy. Yes. Then God will lift you up. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch and Iconium, at Lystra, and, and the persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. God will deliver you out of them all. If you're to stand firm, God will deliver you out of many are the persecutions of the righteous, but my God shall deliver you out of them all. That's what the word says. But evil men and seducers, they wax worse. And worse, being de deceiving, they're, they, they are deceiving and they're being deceived. You see, they're deceivers, but they're being de deceived themselves. But continue thou in the things which you have learned and which have been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, 
In other words, he said, I'm teaching you the truth. You see my lifestyle. You see that I'm walking right. I'm living right. And that from a child that has known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise. Say wise. Wise. You want to be used to have more wisdom, get more word in you. And James says, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not. God's not going to get upset with you. Upbraideth means to chew you out. God's not going to get upset with you for asking for something you need. God, you need wisdom. If you don't have wisdom, you need to spend more time in the Word. You need to get the Word of God in you, big in you. And then you need to do what the Word says. Set your yes. heart to do what the Word says. And then pray for God to give you wisdom. And He'll do it. Which are able to make thee wise unto salvation or deliverance through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All Scripture, say all Scripture. All Scripture. Is given by inspiration of God. This literally in the Greek says, is God breathed? All Scripture, in other words, God breathed His Word to His holy apostles and prophets. And they wrote down His Word by the power of God. It was God. God's words. That's why we call the Bible God's Word, because these apostles and prophets, they wrote down as God breathed the Word to them. Amen. So it is God's Word that's breathed. The prophet said, the Word of the Lord came into me saying. They said what the Word of the Lord was. These apostles... They wrote down these scriptures as though God gave them the words to say. Gave them unto salvation. And all scriptures given by inspiration of God are God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. The word of God is profitable for doctrine, for correction, for reproof. In other words, the word of God will reprove people. So some people get under conviction when you preach the word. I've had people where we get to altar time after a service, and I have one person run out the door, and another person ran down in front of the Christ. He is right with God. I mean, the word of God will push you out or push you, pull you in. Amen. There's decision yeah. times, folks. Yeah. There's decision. Am I going to live for God, or am I not going to live for God? Amen. Well, they told me over here I don't have to do that. Well, maybe that's the right place for you to go, but it's not going to get you delivered. You're going to end up going to hell. You're going to end up going to hell. It's not a good thing to go to hell. I've had people joke about, you're going to party with their buddies in hell. No, you're not going to be partying in hell. It's not going to be a party in hell. It's not a good place. It's going to be evil place. I mean, you'll totally be separated from God, from the life of God, from the things of God. Jesus made mankind to be his children. God doesn't want you to perish. God's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. We need to preach the word without compromise so people can repent. Amen. Turn away from their sins and turn to yeah. God and show with a changed life that they really had changed. Yeah. That's the message of the gospel. Yes, it is. Repent, repent, repent. Thank you, turn away from your old ways and turn to God. Amen. That's the message that John the Baptist preached. That's the message Jesus preached. That's the message Peter, James, and John, they all preached that same message. Jude, they all preach that same message. Repent, turn away from your sin, and turn to God, and God will turn you from darkness to light. They'll deliver you from the kingdom of Satan to the kingdom of God. But that is the gospel of the kingdom, is to repent, turn to God. And God wants you to do that, because you're on your path to hell when you're in sin. God wants you to be delivered from sin. The word saved means delivered. One time I was praying, the Holy Spirit spoke this to me. He said, saved means delivered. Delivered. Saved means delivered. Salvation is deliverance. And Jesus is the Savior, the deliverer. Jesus is the deliverer, the Savior. He came to deliver us from sin. That's been the problem with mankind. Because under, it says in Hebrews, it says, under the old covenant, the, they had blood of bulls and goats that covered our sins, but there was no power in that blood to take away our sins. It says in 1 John, though, it says, And Jesus came to take away our sin, and in him is no sin. So we need to reckon ourselves indeed to be dead unto sin, but alive unto God through Christ Jesus. It says in Romans chapter 6, Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin continue to live therein? That's right. So we're delivered from sin. Amen. We need, to, we need to believe we're delivered Thank from you, sin. Lord. Don't say, I can't do that. Don't say, I have no self-control. The Bible says we have self-control. 
We've been given not the spirit of fear, but of power and of love. And the Hebrew Greek word for sound mind is self-control. We've been given by the spirit self-control. Yes. So if you need to say, I don't have self-control, just shut your mouth and say, I have self-control. I can do whatever God needs me to do. I can do, I can, yeah, I can don't have to eat that cookie. I've got self-control. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Lord. But God is good. God is good. God is my, we are in the end times, folks. We're in perilous times. We're in, I mean, you know, you know how perilous it's get. I mean, the evil is going through our radio waves, through our TV waves. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, I know this whole coronavirus deal. I mean, it's crazy, folks. It's all manipulation. It's all control. I, I had a person from Clay County a few weeks back call me. I said they had a complaint about our church. They said we reported that we were packing people in there belly to belly in our building. Belly to belly. Well, That's what she said. They said belly to belly. <laughs> and I said, well, let me. I said, let me ask you this. I said, are we required to wear masks? She said, no, we just recommend it. And I said, well, you come to my church sometime. You see how many people we got there. She said, no, I've got my own church. I said, where do you go to church? She said, I'm not going to tell you. That's my business. <laughs> She's asking me my business. I'm glad I signed up on it. Good. But, I mean, it was kind of annoying to me. She wants to know exactly how many, what size my church is and all these details. I said, you need to come over to my church. You'll see what size our church is. That's fair. That is fair. And, and there's no requirement anyhow. So they said, no, it's just a recommendation. Well, you know what recommendations are good for? Mm -hmm. Not much. <laughs> Everybody's got a recommendation. <laughs> I won't say what the saying is. I know you know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> I know you guys are smiling. You know what I'm talking about. Anyhow, <coughs> we just need to do what's wrong. You know, this, Hebrews chapter 10 says, Forsake not the sinnings of yourselves together to man or son. Right. So that says you're supposed to be going, meeting together to go to her church. That's what it says. Yeah. So now, now people, people say, no, the churches can't have church. But you can go to abortion clinic. Yeah. Now, that, that is really dangerous. Or a, liquor, or a liquor store. Or you can go to a liquor store or a drug, get marijuana yeah. dispensaries. Yeah. You can, that's all. But a church is not a... Not a Essential business. Essential. We're not a business. Uh, the essential thing. It is the most essential thing. Church is. Yes. yes it, is. it is the most essential because that is life and death. Eternity. Mm -hmm. That's life and death. But it's all about control. It's life all about the government easy. trying to put their finger on the scale. It's all they think they can control you if you give in to it. You don't give it. You know, if you give an inch, I'll take a mile. Amen. First, Trump comes up and says, it's just going to be a 14 day, 14 day deal. That was over four months ago. <laughs> over four months ago. And now it's the twist it down tighter than it's ever been. It is sick, I'm telling you. Anyhow. Well, that's my message. <laughs> Lord God. What am I, you God, we serve? What am I, you God, we serve? Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. He is the King of kings. He is the Lord of lords. His name is Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, oh, he is the king. Thank you, Lord. Oh, you're worthy. Father God, we just love you so much. We love you so much, Father. We pray that you take this word we've received today, Father, 
ingrained it deep within our hearts. Father, help us to be doers of the word. Yes. And not just hearers of the word, deceiving our own selves. Hallelujah. And I give you praise. I give you glory. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray that everybody who wants to receive the Holy Ghost, Lord, you will strengthen them, Lord. You will give them the Holy Spirit. Well, you will empower them with power from on high and fill them up with the Holy Ghost by your power and by your might. I pray in Jesus' mighty name. Father, people that need touches in their bodies, Father, that you'll make them completely whole by the power of your word, by the power of your blood, the blood of Jesus, Father, that you will strengthen them, Father, that you will set them free. Father, I pray that those who have addictions, Lord, you will destroy the power of those addictions by the power of Jesus' blood, by his shed blood, Father, that you'll break the power of those things in their lives. I pray in the name of Jesus. Show yourself mighty, Father, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, you're worthy, Father. Father, use us, I pray, to touch people's lives. Every day, Father, in our lives, every open doors of opportunity for us to witness to people, Father. Yes. By your power and by your might, I give you glory. I give you praise. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. You. Oh, you're mighty God. You're more than enough. Oh, we give you glory. We give you praise. Oh, you're worthy, Lord. Thank you. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. Oh, you're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. Oh, we give you glory, Father. We give you praise, Lord. Oh, we magnify you, Father. We glorify you, Lord. Oh, Rabondo, Rabando, Rabodo, Rabosi, Irabacanda, Rabando, Rabando, Hor Rabosi, Irabosondo, Rabasso. Draw unto me, says the Lord, and I will give you rest. Seek, seek my face, says God, and I will be found of you. Draw near to me, and I will draw near to you, says the Lord. I will strengthen you, says the Lord. I will give you the ability you need to do whatever I call you to do, says the Lord. I will empower you, says the Lord. To be who I've called you to be. Thank you, Lord. I give you praise. I give you glory. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. Thou art worthy. Thou art worthy. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, glory and honor. Glory and honor and power, for Thou hast created, hast all things created. Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are created. Thou art worthy, O Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for it. Hallelujah. Speak the word with me, will you? Yes. So this I can do all things. I can do all things. Through Christ, through Christ, through Christ who strengthens me. Christ strengthens me. Christ strengthens me. Greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. The greater one is in me. The greater one is in me. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not below. Everything I put my hand to prospers and is blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. I'm redeemed. I'm set free. I'm made whole in the name of Jesus. I'm dead to sin. I'm sickness and disease has no place in me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Oh, you're worthy. You're worthy. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father. Oh, you're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. God is good all the time. You might have any prayer requests here. I need prayer right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Yes. Anybody else? Yes. Gotcha. Right. We, we, we've never missed a service since we opened. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory to God. Praise you, Father. Yes. Brother in law. Yeah, we need to pray for Karen too. And Arnie, I saw her in the laundry room and I thought she needed her today. Yeah. I talked to her on the phone. That's not good. So. Yes. Right. Amen. Father God, we lift up these needs before you right yes, now in the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of we Jesus. stand in the gap for every one of these situations, Father. You heard these, Father. these needs, Father. Father. So we stand in the gap for every one of these things, Father. We build, stand in that gap. We build up the hedge that you might deliver your people, Father. We just pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus that you show yourself mighty. You said in your word that the goodness of God draws people to repentance, Father. So just show your goodness and your strength, Father, and your power, Father. To them, so they would come to a saving knowledge of you, Lord. Yes, we give you praise. Jesus. We give you glory. We get, come against Jesus. every power of darkness Lord. that's yes. trying to hold people yes. in bondage. We bind you, Satan, in the name of yes. Jesus. Yes. Father, we yes. pray yes. for our lost yes. loved ones, Lord. Yes. Draw them to yourself in a mighty yes. way. Yes. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness, your mercy, your grace. You are a good, good God. And we just love you so much. You, we glorify you, Lord. We Draw magnify you, Father. In the name Draw of Jesus, in, thank you, Father. Jesus. We love you, Lord. Father, we just pray that as we go this Jesus. week, Father, that you just use us, Lord, to touch people's lives, Father. Yes. We thank you, Lord. You're a mighty God. Yes. You're more than enough. And I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for this service, Father, that will never, ever be the same after this day. Lord. We're growing day by day, Father, more and more in the Every image day. of Christ. And I give you praise. Yes, I give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank yes. you, Lord. Anybody else have anything? Make it be yeah. so. You want to say something? Yes. Um, Did you give her a mic? Everybody needs to hear you. Yes, we can't hear you. I can't hardly hear you. Everybody thinks they don't need a mic. Ashley, they don't want to talk. Carol, not wanting to talk. Carol. Well, anyway, um, I didn't see him this every time a church filled with people. I see my family. The doors are open. It's time. The whole church is full of people. They're trying to get in. And the doors are open. So, just pray that we'll bring them all in before it's too late. Sure. Because the time is getting short. It is short. Amen. When you see, when you shut your eyes, every time I shut my eyes, I see a whole church full of people. Praise God. And the doors are open. Praise God. Praise the Lord. God's good. Hallelujah. Anybody else have anything? You're dismissed. <laughs>